So uh, please welcome Tetsuya with applause on Discord. Okay, let's go. Okay. Um, hello, everyone. Um, I'm Tetsuya, uh, working at an edtech company based in Tokyo. So my Twitter account is Jesse Tetsuya. I'm going to upload my slide on Twitter and in Discord. So if you have any interest in it, you can follow me. So if you have some questions or comments when I'm presenting, uh, please uh, comment in the Discord. And I'm fluent in both Japanese and English, so you can ask me questions in either language. So I mostly work in both data science and engineering in my daily work and have been involved with several AI ML projects and have been implementing ML APIs and ML Ops environment. So based on my experiences, I will talk about Flask 2.0 versus Fast API in REST API development. So this is the background. Uh, there are many kinds of web application frameworks. On the other hand, REST API development for Microsoft architecture and AI ML projects are in demand. So let's look at numbers. Many frameworks exist, even though specifying Python web frameworks. The left picture is a Stack Overflow survey result of Python framework users popularity. And the right picture is JetBrains survey result. According to these survey results, Flask is more popular than Fast API. On top of that, Flask had a major version up from version one to version two on May 2021. So Flask is getting more attention this year. However, Fast API, which focuses on easily developing APIs, has been rapidly getting more popular since Fast API became in public. 2018 because of the demand of ML API development. So this makes many Python engineers wonder which framework is more appropriate in AI ML project. So here's a question. How can we choose Python frameworks, which is better Flask or Fast API? I will take this approach to answer the questions. I assume that four evaluation criteria, which are variety of functions and ex functions and extensions, performance, flexibility of REST API architecture, and learning costs. Based on these four criteria, I will compare Flask and the Fast API. But we have only 30 minutes, so I do not talk about details of the meaning of each word, such as what is API, and what is REST, and et cetera. So also, this talk is based on my experience of my AI ML project. So the target audience of this talk might be the Python engineers, data engineers, and the ML engineers, and engineers who productionize ML model or develop data-oriented products in daily work. <clears throat> so follow up, uh, Flask has major version up from version one to version two in May, 2021. In this year, Flask included nested blueprint, async await, a type hinting, 15 times speed up of much platform body and the routing shortcut. So this talk is based on Flask 2.0. So for audiences who have never used Flask and the Fast API, I will quickly summary of them. I will quickly share a summary of them. So both frameworks are micro frameworks 
My flask is developed by Armin Rollinger in 2010. And first API is developed by Sebastian in 2018 based on Starlet. This means first API is a wrapped framework of Starlet. Flask, Flask is risky based framework and first API is ASCII based framework. The biggest differences are the server interfaces and eight years history gap. So these differences influence the functional varieties, performance, flexibility, and the amount of know-how on the online resources. Okay, so now I hope we are on the same on the same page. So let's get in detail about differences from the next slide. I will talk about differences of functions and extensions of Flask and Fast API at first. I picked up the characteristic functions of each framework. Basically, both frameworks have similar functions and extensions. Even if one has the other does not have, third party libraries or others can achieve what both frameworks want to do. For example, Flask has blueprint, but a fast API has API router, which are similar loadless functions. Pydantic and Open API are not built in Flask, but if you want to use them, you can install Pydantic from PyPI and use uh, JSON schema as data validation. So in terms of extensions, the result of Google index search shows that Flask has large amount of extension, while Fast API does not. Extension could get rid of your extra effort to develop uh, functions from scratch, such as an email, authentication, logging, and etc. So I cannot talk about all of uh, extensions within 30 minutes, but let me give you more detailed explanation of request and application context of Flask and Pydantic and the Open API. Pydantic has good match with data class, MyPy type, on, type annotation, and Open API. On the other hand, this type annotation ecosystem is not necessarily dependent on framework. Also, if you do not hesitate to write validation codes by yourself, it is not necessary for, for you to use it. The Swaka editor and the Swaka UI could be replaced with Sphinx and JSON schema, even if generating the code by OpenAPI generator, logic has to be written by hand, so the use case might be limited. <clears throat> The Sphinx and JSON schema can be uh, one of the options, uh, especially in AI ML projects. In AI, for example, uh, this is because in AI ML projects, uh, data scientists and ML engineers have accountability for stakeholders of data. So in order to explain the detail, Document flexibility and maintainability are critically important. So there are many cases that uh, these stakeholders do not have engineering background and not familiar with API specifications. So also Sphinx has more flexibility to generate a document from JSON schema and add images and description more flexibly. So Pydantic and OpenAPI could be replaceable with others. However, request and application context which Flask has seems to be unique comparing to other frameworks. So request and application context are the memory space for framework building global variables, such as current of G request session. So let me share more about what they are. This slide shows the way to use current app and the request which Flask has. 
Flask code and the Fast API code look like very similar with each other. The way to use request for Fast API is a standard way compared with other Python frameworks, but they cannot use it like Flask use. Both look like similar with each other, but reality it does not. This drawing shows how Flask handles requests and output responses, and how the application proxy and request proxy are used. The current app and the request proxies are not actually global variables. They point to global objects that are implemented as context locals. The proxies are always unique to each worker. So just by looking at this sequence from request to response, some of you might uh, question if the access to global variables are threat safe and threat unique. So the data need to be stored in a way that only one worker can retrieve back, which means the data get back their own specific data that's unique to each worker. In order to achieve this, context local is implemented in Flask by using local stack of Verkzerg. Verkzerg is a comprehensive whiskey web application library, which is also built in Flask. So this implementation of Flask, such as context local, application context, request context, current app, G, request in session, characterizes Flask. So however, context local is in fact uh, set local, so which is not for big application and it is not appropriate in asynchronous. So the usage of it depends on the situation. So Flask has unique functions, which are not replaceable and much more extensions, and they are more index results than fast API. So in terms of Flask, in terms of variety, uh, Flask wins out over fast API. On the other hand, main feature of fast API is performance. So in the next section, uh, compare the performance between them. So next, um, I will take a look at performance, which means the speed and the stability of I.O. bound processing. So before starting to test performance, we should clarify why you test performance, what you test, and how you test. The reason that the I.O. bound processing uh, largely influences the framework and application server selection, while CPU-bound uh, uh, CPU processing can be recovered by other type of Python, such as Python or other languages, because global interpreter lock just constrains a single process and a single set. So to compare them, I used a uh, simplest and the same async based code of Flask and the Fast API on the single worker. And I checked the performance by using Vegeta as a load test tool. Vegeta is Golang based HTTP load test tool. It can be used both as a command line UTT and library. So I know so many of them, including me, use lowcast in my daily work, but this time it is too much. So I chose a Vegeta. So uh, these are very simple and the same async based code of Flask and the Fast API. 
In order to easily check output, I wrote one second strip with async, async.gather function and print function. Each request will take one second until it is finished. If Vegeta attacks too much to this code, the code will be broken. So I will order Vegeta to send 10 seconds per second for 10 seconds. So now make Vegeta attack. So this is a result of Vegeta attack uh, that I send 10, second, 10 requests per second for 10 seconds. The amount of requests are very small, but it is okay if you could insight for results. So look at the ball numbers. Um, as you can see the results on the table, Flask took 39 seconds to handle one request and fast API took 10 seconds. So fast API is faster three times than Flask. On top of that, Flask has 28% error rate while fast API is 100 success rate. Of course, if you want to test performance more seriously, or you have planned to do load tests for product release, you should set up the environment using only for the load test and send larger amounts of requests, which is much heavier. So just in case, uh, let's look at other evidences. According to these performance test websites, uh, we can make sure that fast API is faster than Flask. So why is Flask so slow? So as you can see the output of the left box on the slide, uh, this code handles each request one by one and finish one by one task. On the other hand, Fast API concurrently handles requests and output each response. <clears throat> This is because, in fact, async of Flux 2.0 is not actual async that everyone image. Uh, Flask is executed within the context of a synchronous framework or the async code was executed. Even if various async in a single request was executed, each async task must finish before response gets sent back. So this results in the error rate and latency of Flask. However, uh, it is very difficult to test performance only by just comparing frameworks because uh, there are several influential factors of performance, such as web servers, interfaces, application servers, libraries, application code and languages and network. Besides architecture with private cloud services can recover the performances. So you can choose each component and recover each weakness according to tier one to tier three architectures. So the latency and error rate for us could be recovered by the way of writing code and load, load Load, load answer. So uh, in terms of performance, uh, fast API overweights Flask. Next, uh, let's look at flexibility of REST API architecture that Flask and fast API can make. In this talk, architecture means that directory architecture In the case of REST API architecture for MAPI, there are less of random project, project structures like MVT or MVC. So our basic REST API architecture has only models and views, which is logic. And also Google, Google index search results of the Flask directory templates of cookie cutter are more the fast API. So let me give you examples about directory structures. 
This is one of the examples uh, based on my experiences. I found that this kind of trajectory structure is very easy to work with. The trajectory structure on the left box has the API trajectory and the model trajectory as the main root trajectory. The dandanini.py module located in API trajectory has routing list. Each logic for each endpoint is implemented in each module located in URLs directory. If you are working in a small team, one to three members, and at new endpoints, and you can just add it to new endpoint URLs directory. If the number of members increase, you can split each module into each version and work together as staying loosely couple between modules. Fast API can make it possible to have similar trajectory structure with Flask, but database connection and config are a little bit different from Flask directory practice. So in the case of development by Flask, the constant, constant variables are set in the config files rather than environment variables. And Flask has wrapping libraries of database connection, uh, such as uh, Flask SQL alchemy. So this makes us to focus separately on uh, models and config individually. On the other hand, Fast API basically sets the uh, constant variables as environment variable and prepare database directory for database connection models and data validation schema. But this also looks like simple. Overall, both do not have largely differences in terms of flexibility. If I had to say Flask has more cookie cutter template than the Fast API, but it, it is not such important. So both frameworks can make various patterns of trajectory structures. Some of audiences might also know other patterns or other practices. And uh, in terms of flexibility, we should not judge which is better or not. So it depends on how much you are familiar with is the framework. So lastly, I will talk about learning cost. Learning cost means how much time you will take to master what you don't know at all. This is decided by difficulties to write code and to know how to write code. As we saw the code so far, Flask and Fast API are grammatically similar with each other, but you need to know the terminology around async if you use Fast API and accessibility to resources, which means resource volumes are important to learn new things. So I roughly searched learning materials of both frameworks by using these indexes on this slide. Overall, Flask has more resource volumes than Fast API. I guess that this is because Flask and WSGI has more history than Fast API and ASCII. So some audiences might have an interest in Flask or Fast API and async. So let me share quickly uh, learning strategies and learning materials. This is a kind of off topic, but I have strong 
background of education and technology. So let me share each step to learn new things. So first step is to recognize what you don't know and categorize a type of knowledge. And the second step is to acquire declarative knowledge. It is basically how you know to do something such as facts, word history, or rules for mathematical equations are all examples of declarative knowledge. And declarative knowledge is also usually explicit knowledge, meaning that you are consciously aware that you understand the information. The third step is to acquire procedural knowledge. Uh, procedural knowledge refers to the knowledge of how to perform a specific skill or task and is considered knowledge related to methods, procedures, or operation of equipment. So procedural knowledge is also referred to implicit knowledge or know-how. So if you know some of what you want to learn, uh, you should make top-down approach, which means that you can start from step three. Okay, so for engineers uh, without uh, async experience, I recommend uh, these Python movies and tutorials of async IO and learn step by step from one to three. If you are not familiar with Fast API, I recommend uh, these learning materials. Uh, and uh, Sebastian, who developed Fast API, talks around the world Python. So you can easily find hands on movies on YouTube. So these are my recommendation. So for engineers uh, who want to learn, Flask. Uh, the presentation from Armin Rolancher who developed Flask is useful, not to learn, but also to know why he made Flask. And the Flask is also used in the university CS lecture. So the lecture module about Flask of Harvard might make you fun to learn Flask. So um, in terms of learning cost, uh, Flask is, seems to be easier to learn uh, because you can start to develop uh, without knowing async and it has a large amount of learning materials. So um, in summary, yes, um, it, look, it looks like this. All things considered, Flask has a bit more strength than Fast API, but it depends on flexibility. On top of that, among the four metrics, learning cost is most important to measure, measure the framework. This is because variety can be replaced, but with third party libraries or others, uh, performance can be recovered by architecture and flexibility depends on situation. So, and uh, the advancement of technology is very fast nowadays. The trend changes every year. So how fast you can catch up is important. I know uh, many audiences might love Fast API. I also love Fast API, but if you are not familiar with both frameworks, I suggest to learn Flask at the first, uh, and then Fast API with async. Uh, this is because Flask and the Fast API are grammatically similar with each other. This means you can easily catch up even after you mastered Flask. And uh, as I already mentioned, uh, these results. Uh, came from interfaces and history gap. So I will talk about the future with my expe expectations at the last. Hmm. 
I think ASCII became PEP. I think that the development of fast API will be much faster, I hope, and it will have more attention from engineers. <clears throat> and secondly, there are still unknown practices of architecture patterns, including anti patterns. So I would like to continue to look for best practices of architecture patterns, which framework can fit with. And as some already noticed, this last one, uh, Japanese books of Flask and FastAPI are very rare for us to find in bookstore in Japan. I think that this can largely influence the number of learners and the amount of online resources. So I hope that I can see the books of Flask or FastAPI in the near future. <clears throat> So I hope that my talk was beneficial for you. Um, if you have been interested in the edtech domain or in what our team is doing, uh, reach out to me. Thank you. Thank you very much for speaker. Uh, the time is up, uh, time is not remaining. So uh, at first, please give a speaker a big applause on this code. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. Any speaker, uh, if you, if listeners have any questions and uh, questions and like to talk to speaker directly, please go to track channel in the ask the speaker section in Discord. The track number is Pycon JP uh, track five. Yeah. Okay, that's it. Thank you very much for all of the, all of this. And uh, this is the uh, track five is over. Thank you very much.